Dating as a single mom brings with it a whole host of extra responsibilities in dating and colors the way you approach it. And for Piper in this episode, you will hear that her why, which is her child, is the most important thing. It colors everything beyond that to keep you on track to getting what it is that you desire and deserve. And in this episode with Piper, we unpack how her previous dating is coloring her thoughts about Tony and how that is not servicing her. We turn that around and in this episode, you will hear how you can do it by listening to Piper's insights on how she gets it and what she's going to do about it. So listen to Piper, learn, level up, and enjoy getting all you desire in your love life. I'm so thankful for your advice. I love how intelligent and eloquent you are and still have love. You've given me some great guidance and direction, and now it's up to me to execute it. I feel a lot better just working through it. I thank you so, so much. I feel like you already are instilling more confidence in me that this is possible. Sick of sacrificing or settling in your romantic life? Welcome to Make Him Wonder with Coach Paula Grooms, where women struggling in real relationships ask the expert. Unscripted, unfiltered, understandable coaching conversations to help passionate women succeed in love. Hi there, and welcome to Make Him Wonder. I'm your host, Coach Paula, a dating and relationship coach, licensed social worker, and author of the book, Why Won't He Commit?, how a man decides to make you the one. My guest today is 37-year-old Piper, who is dating 36-year-old recently divorced Tony. Piper is concerned about Tony's interest and ability to commit to a relationship again. She wants my opinion on whether or not she should continue to see Tony, and if so, when it would be appropriate to introduce him to her child. Welcome, Piper. Hi, Paula. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How old is your child? She's one. Oh, my goodness. So yep. interesting that you are dating someone. Is he the father? No, the father isn't involved. I'm sorry to hear that. How is that for you? He was abusive, and I'm, I'm happy he's not involved. I'm relieved, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about that. Is he involved with your child? No, he's not. Uh, he sends child support, but and I've offered for him to see her, to meet her with supervision. He declined, and he didn't accept paternity. So he, so he's not on the birth certificate. I see. I mean, I would love to meet someone, a good person, and get married, um, and I would love, I would love for that to happen before she's older, to hopefully just have a really positive male figure in her life moving forward. I like to hear that. That's good. So it's a girl. Correct. What does Tony know about her and about your past situation with the father? So he knows it was a ex-boyfriend that I became pregnant with. He knows just vaguely that he wasn't nice verbally. And he has actually met my daughter. And I know maybe that isn't ideal, but um, he's met her two or three times and she likes him. He likes her. I don't, I don't have any red flags that come up when he's with us. Interesting, because your intro says she wants my opinion on whether or not she should continue to see Tony, and if so, when it would be appropriate to introduce him to her child. So in between us writing that and this time, you actually have introduced them. Am I getting that right? That's correct. I apologize uh, for the confusion. I think uh, I... I think when I wrote in there, I meant vaguely, like, when do I introduce him to people? Like, how much do I talk about her since I am still kind of dating other people because Tony hasn't made it exclusive? So um, that's what I meant by that, Paula. I gotcha. Okay. 
And I'm glad we cleared that because this is a significant issue for single moms about the when, the why, the how, all of it. So let's go back a little bit. How did you meet Tony? Online four months ago. Mm -hmm. And at that time, did you have a phone call? Did you just meet? And where did you meet? I used the information from your program to get him offline to a phone call. So he called, set up a date, and I know you advise against this, but because my daughter is in daycare and it's just easier, we met for coffee. He bought my coffee. We walked around a park and sat under a tree and talked. At that time, I he was res- he was like, he was re- quitting his job and searching after a different career opportunity. And so I was just kind of like, okay, breaks on because men and their egos, everything is tied to their job. And I knew that. So our dates were spread out. That's why our dates have been so spread out partially. What do you mean by spread out? We've been out eight or nine times since in the past four months. What have those dates been like? Dinners, sleepovers, what are the specifics? So first date was coffee. Second date was happy hour time. Uh, Third date was dinner. Uh, They've all been dinners besides one day we took a drive with my daughter and went went up into the mountains. Uh, One time he came over to fix uh, something at my house and I made him chicken nuggets and green beans and pasta or something. So, yep, uh, no sleepovers. We haven't slept together. We did, actually, we went to a hockey game together. It was a lot of fun. And we didn't kiss till, I don't know, the fourth or fifth date. Okay. All sounds good so far. What are your concerns or questions for me about him? I... And I want to be intentional and clear on who I'm dating and why, and that I marry, I marry well to a good man. He's, I have become more and more attracted to him this every day we have, but which I think is a great sign. But he's not who I would have, you know, like the guy I would pick out from a crowd, so to speak. So tell me more. Just. Um, I'm like, physically, he's not who I would be like, oh, wow, he's so hot. Like, I'm going to go for him. He, I've always dated more charismatic kind of guys. And so, and he's not like that. He, he doesn't love bomb me, so to speak. So I don't, I just don't know if I ultimately, if I am being avoidant or if he's like really not moving things forward or if I'm getting in my own way and I'm not letting him. I see. Those are good questions. I I like those questions. It's showing that you are being intentional and that you're trying to make different choices than in the past. Would you say that's true? Absolutely. I have made all the dating horrible choices anyone could ever make. I mean, you name it, I've done it. And I want to be married to someone who will treat me and my daughter well. And so I'm I'm trying, but I'm human. And I, I don't know all the moving pieces sometimes. Like, I don't know when, you know, when is the right time to introduce your child? How much should I be talking about her or not, not talking about her? Good question. Do I talk about my past too? I have a bad dating past. Uh Uh-huh. I like that question, too. Let's dive into that one, because I want to ask you about the past. When you say you have a bad dating past, what do you mean? I think, so I I had or intend to still have an anxious avoidant relationship um, attachment style. So, I mean, like the way I grew up, it was just like I was expected to get married when I was 18. Grew up very fundamentalist, like Christian, in a fundamentalist Christian home. So when I turned 18, I went nuts and I went the other way. I didn't want to be committed. I didn't, I just wanted to like go out and have fun. And and then all the good guys for years, I would push away or I wouldn't be attracted to them. I always dated the bad boys, the guys who like 
slapped me, drank too much, name called, um, just very like, and I never stuck with anyone for very long. I just ran away. So I just, I didn't love myself at all. Such a good insight because you, you hit the nail on the head when you said, I didn't love myself at all, because that's what we do when we don't love ourselves. And thank you for being honest about that. It's so helpful. So, so many of us relate completely to that. You identified it, and that's the first step in rectifying it. It sounds like this last boyfriend that was the father of your child, was he the last boyfriend before Tony or last man before Tony I should say so to be completely honest he he was an intermittent rebound he's very I know that the narcissistic border is wide but he's pretty far on the extreme narcissistic just like a good example of that are we talking about the father of your child or the rebound after the father of your child the father of my child was a rebound. I see. How long were you with the boyfriend before him? Uh, not long at all. Um, the one before that one, I was with for nine months and got my heart broken. It was just during COVID, but he was talking marriage, engagement, all that good stuff. And then he got into an accident and broke his neck. And I spent like three months taking care of him, you know, like being his mother. And so it just ended badly. It, and it was COVID. It was a really stressful time. I'm so sorry. Okay. So kind of go on from there that the father of your baby was a rebound and he had some terrible characteristics and it was an accidental pregnancy. Correct. And I have, I, I knew him for years. I knew him since I was 22. We met in a bar and we've never lived in the same place. So I would get back together with him and he would make it seem like everything would be great. And then those old characteristics would come out and I'd run away. And we had that cycle for over 10 years of the back and forth back together. So that, I mean, that I'm just so ashamed of it. But he purposely, he was trying to get me pregnant every, every time we would get back together. And because of what was going on in my life, I had some health problems going on, just a lot of stress. I was completely out of it. I didn't realize until we were, we were meeting, I was going to see him that I was ovulating. And at that point, I just was so burnt out from dating the bad first date the feminine guys, like the selfish guys, just, and not really having the tools to know how to date. I, I think I was just so burnt out. I didn't care at that point. I just thought, well, whatever. I'm, I'm getting older and I've always wanted to be a mom. Like, I'm not going to stop it. But I did. I told him specifically, I said, like, if you do that, I'm going to get pregnant. And sure enough, two weeks later, I had a positive pregnancy test, so I'm not sure it was exactly accidental, but it was not planned. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. It's so important for you to release it and look ahead to the beautiful life that you're going to have, that you likely have with her yourself, and that you will get all that you desire with a good man because of this recognition. Thanks. Paula, I, I mean, as ugly as a circumstance it, it, it was, I, my daughter changed my life and she really, she saved my life. And I know that sounds just so just ridiculous, but she's the best gift ever. I mean, I think she's taught me about love and like, I don't know. I don't know if I would have been able to love myself the way I do now if I, ha if I didn't have her. Yes. It's meant to be. It's wonderful. So the pregnancy, you decided then, and he decided to give up his parental rights, etc. Is there anything about that you feel would be helpful for me to know going into any of this with Tony? I'm not sure just that it, I don't think so. I think you know everything. He hasn't surrendered his parental rights. 
he just doesn't have them. I mean, he electronically sends me money every month, but it's not court ordered. He could stop doing that at any time. I see. And is that okay for you? I would love for him to surrender his parental rights. And I'm not sure at what point at what point that comes into the conversation. But I do know with his personality, I think it needs to be his decision. Or if I even need to be worried about that right now. Are you afraid of him in any way? I am. In what way? Well, um, mentally, I think just because he get, can just get in my head and just manipulate my brain to think like, or I allow him to. I haven't talked to him since I was 10 weeks pregnant on the phone. I talked to him one time on the phone is all. Because uh, he just has this way of like, manipulating and getting in my head and uh physically i was scared of him i'm not anymore because of the distance and i have been scared of him taking my daughter i was really scared while i was pregnant but he hasn't I expressed see. yeah he hasn't shown any interest i don't think he has an interest in raising a child um why do you think he continues to pay well i don't know maybe he cares and he wants to be involved I think mostly it's because maybe part of him, like, he's not all bad, right? Like, he has a noble place in him that want it, is accepting responsibility for. Her. And that's great. That's fantastic. Um, the other part of that is I was living in a state when I had her where it took a percent of his paycheck. And he was not considering the mom's income. And I had filed for child support in that date. I've since dropped it. It didn't go through. But he would have been at max child support. And he's paying half that. So part of me thinks, well, maybe he's scared I'll file back child support. Um, you know, maybe he's just doing it because it's the right thing to do. I don't know. And I don't want I don't want to engage with him because it, it never ends up being a positive. Wonderful. In other words, you've really made the best of what could have been a negative situation ongoing. And I totally agree that not engaging with him, it's been working. How far apart are you in terms of distance? Oh, good question. 2,000 miles? Yay! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is a gift. Right? Yes, yes. But tell me one thing that is important for me to know to be most helpful to you. When you say he kind of has some kind of hold on me, what do you mean by that? Or that he could potentially? I, I'm i not sure. I think, I think because he understood the way I was raised and just a very fundamentalist household, he was familiar with all of that, very familiar. My parents are both, they both suffer with mental illness, diagnosed mental illness. So that's the home I was raised in on top of the religious brainwashing um, like I experienced. So he was the first person outside the religion but who I love. And I didn't feel like anyone else could love me because no one else could understand how I grew up and I lived with that for so long he just knows me and he knows what makes me tick like I don't know right now if I would have a conversation with him it would probably be different but there's like this way he can just I feel so bad about myself when I talk to him like he can just have me feeling like a piece of crap on the floor in five minutes and that's what I'm scared of you know like I'm not scared of him being physically abusive unless we are together for a long period of time like he's not gonna come like break in my house or something but yeah got it yeah just so many things he said to me over the years I don't I don't know okay one of the things you likely know already is that you have a great amount of resilience fortitude intelligence intellectually i hope you know that thank you you are kind but i have learned everything the hard way <laughs> it doesn't matter how you learned it right doesn't matter in other words you have that here's the thing that's still at play for you is the programming you got from your environment and your parents and that is at play and it is why likely you have had the experiences you have had with men because the experiences with men love interests will replicate 
your earliest childhood experience of love. That's from zero to seven with your parents. And it's very clear to me why you would be anxious, avoidant. Makes a lot of sense. Yes, it it has for me too. And I'm doing neural reprocessing with EMDR and other things that have helped a lot. Uh, Great. But, and I would say, yeah, yeah. When we continue to work on our programming, which is always with us, it's like a ticker tape running behind our eyes, so to speak, in our brains. You think about the old style Wall Street ticker tape. That's the old programming. And without going into depth about your parents both struggling with mental illness and being in a fundamental environment, what do you think the earliest programming for you was? It was, I'm not worthy, I'm gross, Uh, nothing I do is ever good enough. I'm always going to be a sinner, just extremely hard on myself, it's masculine energy. Just like your value and love is what you give to other people, people pleasing. Like I needed to make everyone else happy in my religion, uh, to the guys I dated, I mean, to my parents, and then, you know, just like a chronic period of time where I wasn't getting the validation, just basic, and and I know my parents did the best they could, but, you know, it doesn't make up for the fact that they, they did harm, and that harm wasn't intentional, but there were just so many needs that I didn't have met as a child, and so when I got to be 15, 16, I was promiscuous and that went on and into my mid-20s I just looked for validation and men like men I just with guys yep started doing things I wouldn't have done if I had had a loving a more loving emotionally safe um, childhood absolutely and so you're attempting to provide that for your child yes and it's hard to be a single mom and to do everything and and to give to her physically and emotionally what she needs. Absolutely. But simply the awareness and the attempting to break the chain is so huge. And, you know, I give you a lot of credit for attempting to do that. And the first thing is the awareness. You're there with it now and you're attempting to make different choices with men. For example, with Tony saying, he's not the type I would typically go for. Well, right there, that's likely a good thing. I think so. And the last couple, the last month or so, I have been kind of projecting just myself I think onto him some being like oh he's not committing and he you know because he's freshly divorced no kids which is great but I don't know if it's him moving slow too because his ex sounds like a crazy control freak too you know like how do I know if he's ready or not like how do I know when it, is it okay to wait till we get married to have sex or engaged I mean is that discouraged so I really vulnerably, I don't want to open myself up to anyone again until it's my person, just because that is, it's just so intimate for me. And yeah, especially after going through pregnancy alone and having a baby alone, I just, I don't want to risk that, you know? Yes. So now we get down to it and we talk specifically about Tony, what I might suggest for you and also ask you some questions about the other men that you are dating as well. And I'm going to go into all of that in a moment. I trust you're enjoying Make Him Wonder and that you're getting a lot of helpful information for the life of love you desire and deserve. So if you're not part of the 8020 Wonder Club yet, you need to be because now Make Him Wonder is exclusive a members-only club to listen to every episode, past, present, and future, in full, all ad-free. The 8020 Wonder Club is a Make Him Wonder membership that gives you all of Seasons 1, 2, and 3 in a categorized list by age and relationship status, and a multimedia library of my content, including my book, Relationship Evals, and my Mechanics of Men Mindset Manual, a weekly action step you can focus on 
to attract and keep the man of your dreams and have him committing to you completely in the coming months. Make this the moment you start living as an 80-20 Wonder Woman because love, like life, is best lived in 80-20. When you do 80% of what works with men, the 20% you don't won't much matter. Join the 80-20 Wonder Club by going to the 8020wonder.club. Don't miss out. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. You and your man will be glad you did. So we're back with 37-year-old Piper, who just outlined so well what has occurred thus far and where she is with her pretty much newborn one year and her interest in Tony being recently divorced. Or you said newly divorced Piper. How long has it been for him? To be honest with you, I can't exactly remember. I believe he said a year. Do you know if that's a sign sealed, delivered to the court's divorce on paper year or simply when they decided? I don't know the details. I know currently it is sign sealed, delivered. I do not know the details. How long was he married? Three. It was two or three years. I know they got married uh, during COVID and she asked him to marry her and it wasn't like it wasn't like a wedding. They just got married. Mm -hmm. And what has he told you about the why of the divorce? Other than that, she's crazy. So the he hasn't used those words. It's the couple of stories I've heard about her that made me draw that conclusion about her. But uh, she, I guess, tried to divide him and his family. And that was successful for a year. And he's good, like he's good to his mom and close with his mom. He has had an abusive dad, but him and his mom were really close. So that was hard for him. And then he has said she did some other weird controlling stuff, like some other weird controlling behaviors. But the icing on the cake was when um, his dad got a bad prognosis like a terminal prognosis, and she didn't want him having a relationship with his parents. That's when he pulled the plug. So. Okay. What has he told you about wanting a new relationship or any kind of committed relationship? Um, he's told me he wants a family and he wants to be married. He's asked me all questions like how how long do you want to date before you get engaged like how would you want your potential fiance to go about picking out your ring like would you want to go with them um like how how long would you want to be engaged before you got married but this is kind of where i get into that fight or flight response when he talks like this and he doesn't talk like this all the time but it's like I don't know if he's love bombing me like my ex-boyfriend in 2020 was or if he is sincerely interested in pursuing me. Like maybe I'm not the end all be all for him. Maybe he's filibustering his time. And to be honest, I'm not dating enough other guys. I'm not making time for it. And I know I should be. He talks about the, the future. Great. Why is it that you don't believe him? Because everyone I have ever believed has let me down. Exactly. That's such a great answer. Because, see, you have to stay there with it. That that's why you don't believe him. It has nothing to do with him. It's you choosing to believe that is the issue. It has to do with everyone else except him. Okay. Okay. I mean, he hasn't done anything. I have, I have, not, I have had zero red flags. And I'm very red flag sensitive. <laughs> uh huh. I guess that's yep. helpful. That I mean, that's super helpful. How do I soften then some? Because I'm kind of rigid. Like my schedule is tight. I really don't want to make time for him because I'm away from my daughter. How do I know when the right time is to like open myself up more? What do you mean by open yourself up more? Like to be more vulnerable. To be like more receptive to. <laughs> I don't know, trust in what he's saying. I hope that Mm. makes sense. Again, that comes from you and not him. Because what's happening for you is your subconscious is 
telling you, really like shouting at you from behind your eyes, deep within you, shouting, you can't trust anyone. No one's going to choose you. Love is not to be trusted. Love is controlling. Love is all the experiences you outlined for us earlier about your childhood. That's what your experience of love is. Why would you trust it? You see? I see. Absolutely. You're right. So that's where your work needs to center is you feeding into your subconscious a reparative experience so that you can trust and make your choices from your intellect, not your subconscious. And we do that via sleep meditations, via our self-talk, like affirmations, writing, meditation, but seriously focusing on it in order to repair it so that you can allow him in. Because if you just tell yourself intellectually to allow him in and be more vulnerable, that doesn't change how you feel it, experience it, all of it, and you will just be left anxious and really not able to do it very well. That makes sense. And I don't take time for myself. And that, again, is your programming. Because we don't take time for ourselves when we don't feel worthy of it. And you were programmed not to feel worthy of it. Okay, got it. Wow, I didn't think about it that way. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And it is a challenge. So we do it very incrementally and step by step. It is why when I'm working with someone in a program weekly, we go step by step with what the focus needs to be on. And for example, if you have this issue of not feeling worthy, you want to take something whereby you'll feel worthy doing it and add in listening to stuff that will be helpful for you. And then additionally, you need to be doing sleep meditations. In other words, you take something you need to do, sleep, and that is the best possible time to reprogram your subconscious. And we do the meditations to get into the subconscious what we need it to be programmed with. Worthiness, value, lovability, etc. You mean like binaural beats, like the YouTube videos? I'm not one for the binaural beats. I don't believe that that will be the fastest way into your subconscious at all. And it's not really reprogramming it. Okay. No, it's I am affirmations of what you need. Not you are affirmations. I am. What we put after I am, we become. We need to be doing that in our sleep and awake, whereby we take our intellectual understanding of what we need and feed it to our subconscious. If we were really able to, at the end of each day, analyze our thoughts, a vast majority of them would be negative. And even not overtly negative, but the feeling of we're not quite enough, maybe we didn't do quite enough, we didn't measure up in some way, shape, or form, we're lagging behind, we didn't look right, we didn't do right, we whatever. So we need to feed ourselves with positive affirmations, I am. And you can start with what you know intellectually about yourself so you don't resist it. When I said to you, you are incredibly resilient, do you believe that? I know logically I am, but no, I don't believe it. I mean, I know I am though. So yes, yes, I do, I guess. Right. That's one you can believe. So you can say on the different chakra levels, I am resilient. I feel resilient. I know I am resilient. And that then allows you to take in some other affirmations that you want to feed yourself because you can believe that. So you're opening up your mind to the belief because you are going to have to reprogram your subconscious to know, feel, believe that you are lovable, worthy, valuable, beautiful, all of it, exactly as you are. Okay. When you do that, you can open yourself up and be more vulnerable. Otherwise, it's almost impossible to be vulnerable because you know, I will be hurt. Okay. So in terms of him and your question 
about him not being ready, all of it. Here's a couple of things. First, you're going to take his lack of urgency towards you and trying to get something right away from you as evidence that, well, he really doesn't like you that much. He's really not into you that much. He's not ready to be in any kind of relationship. Does that ring true? It does. And what that is, is that you are used to that from the other type of men that you have been attracted to. That's right. Yep. Because they resonate with your earliest love experience. Whenever a child is parented by someone with, no, it's your words, mental illness, were they diagnosed with a mental illness? My dad, yes. My mom is undiagnosed because she will not go to a doctor. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So anytime there's something like that, drug use, alcoholism, some other kind of addiction where there's hiding, gambling, sex addiction, whatever, then you are programmed as the child to do exactly what you did and what has happened to you. It programs in the child to not trust any love interest. But as humans needing exactly what we don't trust, when someone does something like push through all barriers, push you to do things, show overt, almost pressured interest, what can happen in our minds is that that's evidence of real love. And that's what it should be like and feel like. He's not doing any of that. He's not. Nope. And I mean, even my ex-boyfriend from 2020, he was a way step above baby daddy. And I know that we're not good for each other. We weren't good for each other. However, quick one, you might be surprised to know that there are over 150 real life love and relationship coaching conversations just like this one ready for you to hear right now. And you can have access to all of those by looking at my pinned comment below. Yes, the 8020 Wonder Club is yours for a full month for free by looking at that comment and taking advantage of this wonderful offer for you to level up. Whether you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you're in a divorce situation, you have a situation ship, or you want an ex back, there are 150 plus episodes there and more to come categorized by age and relationship status, all ad-free in their entirety so that you can learn, level up, and take a leap forward in your relationship. Take a look at that comment below, follow the one easy step there, and I will see you in the club. Now back to the episode. A lot of even the patterns within our relationship, I mean, like, I didn't speak up. I didn't say, you know, I didn't express my desires. I was still living in a lot of old behaviors from dating. And he was love balmy. I mean, it was flowers, it was gifts, it was romantic getaways and those things. So, I mean, I think with Tony, it's just, it's polar opposite of what I've had, you know, and it's unfamiliar. But I am growing in in my attraction to him. I mean, I would miss him if we stopped talking, you know. He may be taking a lot of cues from you, if you think about it. There may be no indication to him, other than you accepting his invitations, that you're interested. So are you saying the only way that I show my interest is not out of logic, but it's out of how I feel about myself? Is there any other way I can show? I mean... Well, let me answer that question. You're really on to something there when you say, it's how I feel about myself. Yes, we project everyone how we feel about ourselves. And even when we feel, well, I'm going to hide my fear, hide my trepidations, hide my warts, whatever, the hiding projects something. Okay. Being vulnerable with him will feel very different. And when I say vulnerable, it's an energy and a little bit of what you say. When he said to you about wanting to be married and some other things that he kind of indicated he may be interested in that. What did you say? I mean, I kept it pretty light and breezy. I, he, when he asked me what I'm looking for a couple of times, I was 
said, I would love to be married. <laughs> I just, basic things like for the ring, I was just like, well, you know, my best friend like knows what I want, you know, because he asked me, he said, I'm sure you have a specific ring in mind you want. And I said, yes, yep, I do. And I mean, he asked me like where I wanted to like be married, if I wanted a destination wedding. And, and I, I expressed to him what I would want. I mean, I wasn't like getting really into the conversation, but I, I guess, but I was more reserved with it. Um, you say you haven't had sex, and that's absolutely fine at this juncture, but have you been romantic, meaning lots of kissing and cuddling and receptivity to him? Kissing, hand-holding. Um, I mean, not a lot, because we've, like, mostly gone out, but hand-holding, kissing, like, all of those things. Even with that, honestly, since I've had my daughter, I've always been very affectionate, but like I'm less affectionate. Like I'm very protective of myself in that way. And I know I'm doing that. But I, the other part of it too is he hasn't made our relationship exclusive. And I don't know if he, like, is he presuming we're exclusive or maybe it's just like another excuse I'm making up. But, you know, like I definitely don't want to get into too much romance if we're not exclusive, you know? And there's one thing here that is a problem. And I believe that you are thinking that, you know, how could he be ready? He's not going to be ready. All about the divorce and all of that. In his case, I would err on the side of getting rid of that thought. And most people say, oh, Paula always says, you know, with a divorced man, three years minimum, before dating him, add years on to that if he has children, etc. But what I'm hearing is a pressured marriage and it really blew up in his face and he got out of it and it was very short-lived and that him talking about marriage and getting you a ring is completely indicative of where he is now. You are letting your subconscious get the best of you and override your intellect, which any woman intellectually should know this. No man, really past the age of 18, he'd have to be so incredibly naive and lost to ever mention marriage, a ring, anything at all, unless he was serious. In other words, 99.9% .9 of the time, a man would never mention marriage, a ring, what ring you wanted, anything of the sort, unless he were serious. Okay, wow. Okay, all right, I guess. Okay, all right. I think with my ex, like this is, again, it's my own issue, that boyfriend in 2020, I was so in love with him, and he was talking all those exact same things, marriage, ring, date, like, let's get married in Vegas. And then COVID happened. His business had a problem. He had his health problem. Like, it just went really far south. And I was devastated over that. And, like, just the thought of being that hurt again, I mean, and I know the resilience. Like, I have that. And, I mean, I'm going to be okay regardless of what happens with Tony. But I guess that hurt is, like, still there from that ex-boyfriend, you know? Well, the hurt was a result of your programming that you were going to be hurt, you couldn't trust him, wasn't going to work out. Who are you to deserve that kind of happiness? All of that. And he became a projection of it. Wow, that's, I mean, that's true. Mm -hmm. And this is why... When I work with women, I work with two things. That is the subconscious programming and self-concept along with the approach we take with the man we're interested in. Because without that first part, the second part is meaningless. You can do all the right things and it may work for a time, but it's not going to last. It is our self-concept way of our loving ourselves enough to rehab our programmed beliefs and love experience that allows for the man to be free enough. 
because he lacks the urgency towards you, you feel it cannot be true. And that isn't true. I am going to tell you what I believe you can say. And if you could do this, you will move the needle on your relationship with him and start seeing more of what he can offer you. So here's what I believe you need to do when with him next. Wondering what I'm going to tell Piper she needs to do to have the best chance of Tony coming forward with his desire to commit? In the rest of this episode, I outline the self-concept, mindset, and manifesting Piper needs to be doing on her own and exactly how she needs to behave with Tony starting today so that he feels safe and secure enough. And because I want you to get the results you desire with your current or future Mr. Right, I invite you to check out the 8020 Wonder Club, where you can hear the rest of this episode with Piper, where I outline the what and the how of getting what she wants. The 8020 Wonder Club is an exclusive membership only club of the Make Him Wonder podcast, where you'll get nearly 200 ad-free episodes categorized by age and relationship status, plus all new episodes the moment they're formatted and ready to be aired. Unfiltered coaching conversations like this one, with all my advice and principles to have you succeeding in your romantic life. But there is much more. The 8020 Wonder Club includes my Making Magic with Men Mindset Manual, a weekly video series of mindset and mechanics practices for you to do at your own pace each and every week. It alone is valued at over $500 and is all yours as a member. Join monthly and cancel at any time or save by committing to a 6 or 12 month membership. And not only will you save by committing to more, you'll receive a full coaching intensive experience where you'll be talking to me in a conversation like you just heard. You choose the date anytime during your 12 months and I'll be answering all your questions on getting what you desire and deserve in your love life. Check it out at the 8020wonder.club and join us, as that is the only way you'll be able to hear what I tell Piper she needs to do to have all that she wants with Tony. Don't miss out on how to make your man wonder in the right way to have divine right results in your relationship or how to start dating in a way that guides a potential Mr. Right to do right by you. Go now to the 8020wonder.club. That's T-H-E 8020-W-O-N-D-E-R dot C-L-U-B. You and your love will be glad you did.